Okunaba and Kataria joins us this morning on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Many thanks for joining us and also staying with us. Good morning, Okunaba and Kataria. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Nancy. Let, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, the bold caption talks about presidential primary fallout. We're grieved, but will remain in APC, Amechi, Onu, and Wajoba is quoted than that. You find only President Muhammad Buhari can say if Amechi was fairly treated, according to the aid. aid. Wajoba working with Uzodima to reband party in Imo State. Electronic transmission party CSO caution against sabotage in 2023. We're losing $700 million monthly to oil theft. NNPC, I take that again, NNPCL is quoted. Dangote patrol, patrol team arrests errand drivers. Uh, talking about illegal haulage, Dangote patrol team arrests errand drivers. Federal government Sirab head to court over ASU strike. Again, only good governance will guarantee security in Niger. Catholic bishop quoted on that. Queen Elizabeth II arrives to huge crowd in Edinburgh. That's uh, what you find this morning on the leadership. 210 days after federal government asked court to stop ASU strike. That's on the nation newspaper this morning and supreme court depleted as justice aboki retires another bold caption again you find very sad six feared killed in attack on uba's convoy that video that made it to you know the social media spaces very very uh, saddening brazilian returnee Excretes 92 wraps of cocaine. 36 monkeypox cases recorded in one week, according to the NCDC. We will retire political tourists at Tiku to Dubai, says Shatima. And that's a running mate of the, uh, the All Progressive Congress, APC, Bola Matunubu, a ruling party. The visionary says PDP's campaign spokesman. Niger's debt stock hits 45.25 trillion naira. And that's the much we can take this morning on the nation newspaper. We also have the punch. Federal government may lose 7.58 trillion naira to contract disputes, damages, and firm demands $2.3 billion for alleged a contract breach and files fresh $400 million suit. Most case against government due to officials' negligence and poor handling, says SANs. Buhari administration has capacity to return or overturn case against the government. The Attorney General of the Federation's office is quoted on that. Total manufactured goods falls at 36%. Inflation may worsen. Federal government uh, loses 13.21 million barrels, all worth $603 billion in 2022. 500 senior doctors left Nigeria, says medical buddy. SAN's profs to defend ASU before industrial courts. And gunmen attack if I knew bars convoy cops feared killed. I mean, the videos were very, very uh, glaring right there. Lagos school fence collapses, kills two pupils. Very sad stories making the rounds. And that's it. This morning on The Punch, we quickly run through the Daily Trust newspaper. Life pension for HOS, permanent secretaries upset contributory scheme. How new policy negates constitution. Please, professors, push for exclusion two. Trend dangers and reverse approval. Expert tells 
uh, Buhari. If a new bus convoy attacked in Anambra, orderly is gone down. Ransom fraud, outcome of investigations on Mamu mine boggling. DSS is quoted. E payments hit monthly all time high of 33 trillion in August. Uh, you all have uh, some other reports this morning. 577.36 billion naira, a total of allocation to the PENCOM in 2022. That's the federal government's budget. Uh, you find a graph, uh, a graphic representation of uh, the transaction that went down. And there's also a weekly security review. That's so much we can take this morning on the front pages of our dailies has been made available by a paper vendor. Open our bank, Ontario. Uh, thank you once again for being with us. We appreciate your time. It's my pleasure. All right, let's start off with the attack on Ifanyu Bas convoy. I mean, the videos are really scary, very saddening, the pictures that we see. There's several reports that you have six persons that have died, uh, orderlies and what have you. What, what do you make of this, really? Well, it is quite sad I mean, and quite disheartening. I mean, the loss of any life is, should be painful to uh, any human being with conscience. Uh, but this is what we've been talking about, that the insecurity in this country has uh, assumed a vocalistic dimension. We don't have uh, we are not seized of the past. We don't know what really happened. If it's uh, uh, a dual gum sour, I mean, after you file by, apart from the side of the fact that he's, a politician is also a businessman. So we don't know if it's as a result of the deal that has gone sour. We don't know but I don't think it has any political implications. Why am I saying political implications? I mean, the elections are over. He went to court and took a loss to court, but now he's with YPP. And is there anybody in YPP that will want to assassinate him? So, unless somebody is saying they are scared of his political clout, that he was going to win at the general elections. Well, uh, if you consider that, you can also not completely rule that the issue of politics. But right now, I think uh, we'll be in the haste to jump into any conclusion. It could be politics, it could be business, it could be... What, what for whatever reason, or it could just be an attack on this convoy because they perceive him, they see him as one of those that are instrumental to the... Uh, pathetic state we find ourselves in this country. And what I mean by that is you have the ESN, you have the IPOP, and you have the military wing, which is the ESN. And these EA members of this ESN, uh, I think uh, they have this animosity for the so-called elites, you know. Uh, so it, 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 it could be a portmanteau of people. One cannot. So we have to just wait for the police investigation. We hope it's going to be uh, done expeditiously to vote for the police investigation. Now that uh, policemen are being killed, uh, it will spur God them on to uh, ensure proper investigation is done and expeditiously too. After which, uh, I think everybody will be free and it will be proper for anybody to start making analysis. For now, let us wait for investigation. But it is sad, sad because lives are lost. Sad because it underscores the insecurity in this country. You can imagine if he had not a convoy. And probably what must have saved him was because he was in a bulletproof vehicle. Obviously, a treated vehicle. So that is probably what would have saved him or something. So you can imagine now that it has happened to somebody that is highly placed in the society. Let's see what uh, the federal government will do about if at all this will live in South as a stimulant, if at all. We have a government that is even sick and tired of remaining in office. We are talking of Buhari's government. The man has said it over and over that he cannot wait for May 23 um, for him to exit. But uh, ordinarily, I think you shouldn't have been waited for that. If you're, 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 you don't have that zeal anymore to leave the country, either because of the abysmal failure or because of the overwhelming issue 
all the guys have gone on the doors just to exit to kind of resign. You see, nobody's going to flog you. In fact, this is a nice man. Uh, I mean, it could be a very large and wipe off uh, his, his master's house, his ineptitude in office. So, but he, he doesn't believe that, but even those around him, his cronies, his aficionados, his other people want him to think of that, want to talk of affecting it, because they know what they are benefiting. So it's sad, it's a sad development in synopsis, and uh, we're going to wait for uh, the outcome of the investigation. Well, let's move on to the leadership newspaper this morning. It talks about the federal government and ASU heading to court over the ASU strike. The federal government and Sarab heading to court over ASU strike. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, so so you have Sarab and in collaboration with five students from, you know, various universities who have actually joined forces with Sarab, including the federal government, and they headed to court. What do you think of this situation? I mean, do you think that we should be in court settling all of this? No, no, no. The Shut up and the five students went in court in support of ASU. That they, they did that in support of ASU. That the federal government will make the demand of ASU. And to honor the negotiations which the agreement with. So there are two dimensions. While the other one was the federal government going to court, praying the court to compel ASU to go back to work. What I see is the height of insensitivity. There is no compunction on the part of the federal government. What the federal government wants to do is coerce ASU without necessarily meeting the demand. You know, you have a government that speaks from both sides of the mouth. In one breath, you say you cannot reach the demands of ASU. You cannot even honor the agreement reached with ASU, not just demands. Because they move from demands to agreement. Well, the problem now is the implementation of the agreement. That is where the problem is. And you said the federal government doesn't have the money. You so do. Meanwhile, you have the money. Once if aviation centers workers say they want to go on strike, immediately you reach accommodation with them and you pay because that affects you directly. Now, this doesn't affect you directly because probably you have all your kids abroad. Okay, that aside, you say you also, you've met at least 80% of the demands in one breath. And in another breath, you're saying you don't have the money. I mean, if you've met 80% of the demands, you've practically met all. And the ASU members will not be that insensitive. But because apart from uh, the mere fact that they, they are workers, it's a passion. I don't think any university lecturer is happy sitting at home. Yes, a lot of them are being slated, slated today for uh, uh, not, being in, not being sensitive to the plight of the students. But I am one of those that will still urge us, even if it's going to take four years. I've said this on this program and on sister stations. Even if it's going to take four years to achieve your aim, go ahead. Because the moment you call up this strike, they've been calling us strikes. The moment you call up this strike, I tell you, and your demands are not met. There is that propensity for you to then back on that strike because the demands are not met. And the situations will get worse. The situation in this country, in every aspect of our life, is being exacerbated on daily basis. This is a country where we borrow money to service loan, to service debt. We borrow now to service debt. Not because we don't have, but because of the cataclysmic leadership we have in this country. So I urge us to, not to all those that are saying, no, call up the strike in the interest of the students. We all have kids. Call up the strike in the interest of the students. It's misguided emotionalism. And I don't think I should, should fall for that. Any judges address this issue once and for all. If it means this strike is going to leave the brothers of the so be it. And let the incoming government realize the onerous tax on its shoulders concerning the education system. Enough is enough. The rot in that Look, even when you listen to lecturers speak, even when you listen to PhD holders talk, who are lecturers in university talk, you will weep. 
Go to court and listen to some lawyer speak. You will cry. You can imagine a son telling you, uh, uh, my Lord, it is washer. You will win. So you can imagine the kind of graduates we are turning out on them. Half, we initially we said half big graduates. This time around, they are no longer half big. They are not even quarter big. They are not big at all. And what are we talking about? And you say because they are graduating for their rights, you are not going to pay them? Because you sit in the comfort of your office, receiving salary? You have many comforts. Can't you reduce the number of cars in your comfort? What are you doing with all those security men in your comfort? You're supposed to be a, 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 a servant of the people. So who is supposed to kill you? Go to 10 down the street and see how the prime minister works. Oh yes, you can have security cameras and everything. But look at it. With our file and everything. So, my dear, I will call on ASU to continue with this trial. Let us address these issues once and for all. And this time around, they should not go call up the strike based on promises. No. A certain percentage of the agreement reached must be implemented. Must be implemented. Because at the end of the day, we are worse off for it. You will have doctors. Okay, look at the medical tourism we are talking about. Is it not a shame? How many leaders leave their country to Nigeria to, for medical tourism? How many leaders even leave their country to other countries? How many for medical tourism? Now, as for the, uh, uh, that of education, of course, you all, you all know this is started right from the end of decades ago. Because there was a gradual decline in the quality of education. Go to the schools and see what is happening there. You hear a year three student speaking. English student, you weep. You're not an English student, but you weep. You're not a graduate of English, but you weep. The modern tenses and so on. Why? Because the, even the lecturers are hungry. What do they do? Is it that sex for Marx or cash for Marx? That's the truth. His son is dying. He's on admission in the hospital. And his dollar, a student who has no brain, comes to say, no, just what's my business? Let him go now. What's my business? And I concerned. No, they've not paid my salary. But they'll give me that cash, I beg you. Man, you rush it. Stop. 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 It's none of his business. And that one will graduate. Will also go for his master's. Go for his doctorate degree. Will come back to lecture. And how do you give? You can't be good what you don't have. So you see how the situation is being tested. So if you have, okay, why are you, why are you going to justify being away from is it February to now? If you call up the strike and the aim was not achieved, how are you going to justify? Because if the aim has not been achieved, so how do you justify your being away from work from February to now? How do you justify? Open up on Qatar, I In mean, that case, if but, you go back without but, resolving this issue, then you should also not be paid. That's the truth. Then you should not be paid. So but the I, issue of going to court is completely unnecessary. Just coercing us. I, I want to. Go to the table. You want to achieve what you want to do. <laughs> achieve something to the back there. Excuse me. I'm having terrible call. Yes, go ahead. Well, I, I'd like you to help us understand. I mean, we're talking about our own country, Nigeria. And we're talking about the educational yeah. sector. And yeah. we understand for those who have actually left the shores of this country and for those who have their children outside the shores of this country for education. And we see the infrastructure and the system. Why is it so difficult for us to make it, you know, homely, for us to make it comfortable? That's, that's, that's what to, I just said. What, exa is what exactly is the issue? I mean, do we have to go to courts? Do we have to be dragged? Do we have to That's experience the, point the back I'm and making. forth? You know, is it, is it what I refer to as an illicit intercourse between arrogance and power? You have, first and foremost, you have a president that does not appreciate that. Person. That's the truth about it. That's one basic fact. I don't think, you see, you can imagine whenever it has to do with the military, they approve. 
military to be approved because he's a soldier. And when I say because he's a soldier, there are soldiers who are well educated that could strike a balance. Let's tell ourselves the truth. It is a shame that you have, you say, schools have attempted to be a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Of course, that, that is under review. It's a shame. How do you appreciate education? How? But probably as I don't debate that, it was when, if you had a school start, if standard six, you see, if you saw a standard six product, you had so much respect for a standard six product. But not today anymore. I'm talking about the days of our fathers. Not today anymore. So, the truth about it is, we have a leader, first time, because the box starts as a stable. You have a leader that does not appreciate what education is all about. He doesn't. Now they will say, okay, what up before him? Yet yeah, there were strikes. Okay, yes. How many leaders let us face the fact? Apart from Yara Dua and the uh, Gul of Jonathan. How many of these Nigerian leaders in the past? They actually did. I'm not talking about their Ziki ways. I'm not talking about their Ziki ways. Okay, you cannot even compare because then there are no strikes and nothing. Then you had the region, and the region were performing extremely well. It was healthy competition. You had the uh, 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 You had uh, uh, You had the healthy competition going on there. All right, open the bank entirely. And what? <laughs> we have to go now. Thank so the you. Truth is, thank oh, you so much. Problem. Yes, we have to go. Uh, thank you so much. It's always a delight to listen to you, share your thoughts. We appreciate the insight. Uh, you have shared on some of the big stories this morning on our front pages. We look forward to sharing your thoughts next week. It's my pleasure. Good morning. All right, then. Uh, we've been speaking with Opunabo and Katara. He's uh, a major stakeholder in River State and also a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much. We take a break down. When we return, we will be heading and looking at the first major conversation. But just before then, let's tell you what happened today in history. Please stay with us.